Hello everyone, today I'll be talking a bit about AI in Minecraft, and then building a simple example using a genetic algorithm. I feel like I should include a bit of a disclaimer, there won't be anything very interesting in this video. There aren't any neural networks or AIs completing the game, it's just a bare minimum proof of concept type of thing. Maybe we could do something a little cooler in a future video, but not today. I'll also be skipping over a lot of the technical details, and some stuff might be oversimplified. With that out of the way, let's start by looking at the problem. The bot has an algorithm to control it. You can think of it like the brain. The algorithm takes some information about the world and the circumstances of the bot as input, and outputs what the bot would do in response. So obviously you want it to run the algorithm multiple times per second, and continuously update the bot's inputs and outputs, which puts it into a bit of a feedback loop. Some examples of inputs would be the blocks and mobs that are near the bot. You'll probably also want it to factor in the items that the bot has, the bot's armor, enchantments, or active effects, and the amount of cooldown. It should be noted that some bots don't use any of these things as inputs, and instead use the current game screen. These are cool, but my computer's a bit of a potato, and I don't think it could handle something like that. As for outputs, this can include a direction to move in, with what speed to move in that direction, and maybe an action for the bot to perform, such as to use the item it's currently holding, or to switch to a different item. The algorithm the bot uses has certain parameters that can be tweaked to make the bot behave differently. What we want to know is what set of parameters makes the best bot. And by best bot, I mean the bot that scores the best with the fitness function. A fitness function is a function that evaluates bots and gives them scores. Usually people choose to make a fitness function where a bot will get a higher score if it's able to do something like survive for longer, or collect items or something. But it can be whatever you like really. Bots could, for example, get a higher score for dying faster, or for dealing damage to other bots. Once we have a fitness function, we're left with the problem of trying to figure out what set of parameters gives us the best scoring bot. Maybe we could try to brute force it by testing every possible combination and choosing the best one. But that seems pretty infeasible without a supercomputer. Another option might be to calculate the best option, but that can be complicated, especially if you aren't good at mathematics. A fairly simple yet powerful solution is the genetic algorithm. Here's how it works. We create a bunch of random sets of parameters. We can also stop calling them sets of parameters and start calling them genomes, and call the individual parameters genes. The number of genomes you create is called the population size. Test all the genomes you create and give them each a score. Randomly choose three genomes. Make a new genome which is a mixture of the two that scored the highest. Continue doing this selection and crossover thing until you have as many new genomes as old genomes. While you do this, some of the time you should apply a mutation, which is where you set one of the genes in the genome to a random value. The percentage of the time that you do this is called the mutation rate. If, for example, the mutation rate is at 5%, each genome you make should have a 5% chance of being mutated. In reality, your mutation rate should probably be around 1% to 0.1%. Now that you have all these new genomes, you can get rid of the old ones. These groups of genomes are also called generations. So we are getting rid of the old generation and keeping the new generation, which makes the new generation the current generation. You can score all the genomes in the current generation and make an even newer generation, the same way you did for the last. If we keep doing this, making generation after generation, the scores should, on average, be increasing. After a few hundred, or maybe a few thousand generations, the scores should hopefully be significantly higher than those of the first generation. What we end up with isn't necessarily the best possible combination of parameters, but it's still probably pretty good. 
If you want to make a general purpose Minecraft AI, there are quite a few problems that need to be solved. For example, Minecraft is a big game. There are hundreds of blocks, items and mobs, which generally means hundreds of different inputs for the algorithm. Maybe even thousands if you want your bot to be able to see more than one block at a time. There are also a bunch of different game systems for the bot to learn about, including but not limited to farming, fishing, crafting, bartering and boss fights. That's not to say it's impossible, but it's certainly a difficult yet interesting problem that will take time to solve. The system I designed has three main parts. The head, the managers and the bots. The head, which is responsible for keeping track of progress, as well as controlling the overall genetic algorithm, starts by generating the initial population of genomes. A manager can request a genome for evaluation. It gets sent a genome from the head, which it can then plug in as the parameters to a bot's algorithm. It keeps track of how well the bot performs and can report that information back to the head. A single manager can run multiple bots, and multiple managers can connect to a single head, even using a different computer. The bots will also need a server to connect to. I'm using a paper server on version 1.16.5, which should hopefully give me a little boost in performance. For the purposes of testing the system, I've come up with a bare minimum test to see if this can actually work and to make sure there aren't any serious bugs. The bot spawn into a room which contains a zombie. Any mobs around the bot will mentally exert a force on the bot. The strength of the force decreases with distance and has a multiplier which is determined by the genes. If the multiplier is high, the bot will be more attracted to the mob. If the multiplier is negative, the bot will be repelled by the mob. Each type of mob has its own multiplier, so there's a zombie multiplier, a chicken multiplier, and so on. The fitness function I'm using scores the bots higher for surviving longer. What we should expect to see is the bots performing poorly, then learning to move away from the zombies. After that, they probably won't get any better because their algorithm doesn't allow for more complex behaviour. By graphing the average score in each generation, I'd probably expect to see something like this, if it's working properly. If the bots aren't getting any better, the line should be flat, something like this. And if for some reason the bots are getting worse each generation, the line would slope downwards, something like this. After running the bots with a population size of 12 for 20 generations, these are the results. Looks pretty good. They're running away from the zombies, just as expected. Of course, if this were anything more complicated, you'd want a population size much larger and to train it for much longer. If you're a regular viewer, you might have noticed I didn't use the usual skins for the bots in this video. Which do you prefer, default or custom? I'm trying to improve my videos, so your feedback is appreciated. On a related note, I recently passed the 1024 subscriber milestone. Thanks guys. And if you haven't already, consider subscribing. It really helps out the channel, and you can always change your mind.